now for my career, the biggest driver that I have is um, how can I uh, create a safety net for my parents for when they eventually retire. سلام من مورویده روحانی هستم خیلی خوشحالم که اینجا هستم امروز I came here when I was 10 I went to school in Iran and obviously all my family is still in Iran except for my parents and so uh, a lot of my memories are driven by my memories with my family Iran is a beautiful country um, we lived in Tehran uh, it's, it's a hustling and bustling city like Toronto for the Iranians watching this they'll be very familiar with Shomal so my grandparents had a villa there and we used to just go up there frequently for weekends and um, uh, the roads, uh, they go around mountains so they're kind of dangerous and uh, they're tricky but um, it's like a six hour drive and those are my best memories with my parents because we spent a lot of time together in the car. We somehow managed to put everything on a plane and come here. I mean there's no really internet back then um, so my parents just had a uh, two friends in Vancouver and so that's how they decided to go to Vancouver and that's all they knew was what you know word of mouth from those friends and so um, I still remember our interview we went to Turkey for our interview and um, my mom spoke very good English so um, it was easier for us to navigate once we got to Canada a distinct memory I have is we got to the airport uh, we moved to Vancouver um, and we were driving through downtown and then Stanley Park and I remember thinking I've never seen a city center that was so green before because Tehran's not that not as green as Vancouver obviously and I remember just yeah thinking oh it's so pretty here my dad's an engineer um, but he couldn't get work in Canada because uh, you need Canadian experience to get uh, you know your first job in Canada which makes no sense I saw my dad deliver newspapers for the first time and that really broke my heart and I remember just seeing the look in his eyes so I felt like it's my responsibility to help take the burden off um, and so I got a job from a very young age I convinced some retailer to hire me when I was 13 <laughs> and like this way I can just pay for my my own stuff so like school field trips my new clothes you know new first cell phone everything I paid for myself um you know moved out at a young age because I wanted to pay my own way and pay for my own tuition and I feel a uh, responsibility uh, you know they brought me here I have a better life because of them um and they had to sacrifice something uh and uh, so I have to do my best to make sure that they're comfortable here for the rest of their life. Back in Iran, internet is a political subject, you know, it's censored a lot, the flow of information is, is controlled a lot, and it's everything is very centralized. Um, and so I've always been interested in um, different, um, you know, how I can be involved uh, from a public policy and political perspective when it comes to advancing new technologies. And I think blockchain is interesting to me because of the opportunity to decentralize um, control and give control back to individuals. We need to see some decentralization and some control given back to people in terms of, you know, how they use something and, you know, how, uh, in, in, the, in the case of the internet, how they're their data, their privacy, um, or how they even interact with it or transact on it or, and whatnot, um, how that's controlled. Um, and so for me, uh, Web3 goes beyond just crypto and digital assets and modernizing our payments infrastructure and, and, um, uh, and taking out you know, middlemen when it comes to transacting. It also goes into our day-to-day, -day, everyday lives when it comes to how we use the internet. What is the next big digital challenge of our time? And I think the, um, I think the answer to that is the digital economy. Um, so I think that uh, Web3 um, and blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies, digital assets uh, generally have a lot of potential there um, in terms of advancing our digital economy beyond what big tech companies are doing uh, and how the big banks are gonna be involved uh, in advancing our digital economy. I mean, we've been uh, waiting for, uh, you know, modernizing our payment systems in Canada for, for years. Uh, can't really wait around for that. So, and I think we already have some of those technology solutions available to us um, uh, through the advancements in Web3. Every legitimate 
industry that's here to stay has to know how it's going to represent itself to governments, um, how it's going to negotiate with regulators, and it has to have a policy agenda. And I didn't see that for for Web3 uh, and these technologies in Canada. It's definitely a tough time for um, anybody to be uh, feeling optimistic about um, risk-taking behavior. Are we falling behind other jurisdictions? Um, from a policy perspective, probably. Um, there, we're definitely ahead when it comes to some things. So we have crypto ETFs here, but I mean, that was largely due to a lawsuit um, because the industry fought back. Um, but in all other aspects, uh, we have a framework to, for regulation, but it's not ideal. Uh, and like I mentioned, it's not encouraging competition, it's not encouraging innovation. So if we want to enter the next phase um, uh, of growth, uh, we definitely need to see some changes and shifts in terms of um, uh, the policy agenda for crypto uh, in, in the country. And that's sort of um, my job to do. <laughs> what do these technologies have to offer in terms of um, tangible solutions to everyday problems. The digital economy isn't just about Canada, America, the European Union, and a few, you know, a few other countries. It's about connecting the world. Um, and it's about providing products, services, solutions that impact and benefit everybody in the world. It's about wealth creation globally. Um, and so I think the more immigrants or people with that perspective in Canada uh, and in the Western world can become passionate about blockchain technology and become passionate about democratizing our uh, finances, democratizing access to information, democratizing you know, the content that's on our internet, um, the better it is for uh, our families abroad. My parents are quite young and I think they had, they're very ambitious um, and I think the, the difficulties in integrating in Canada and, um, you know, figuring their way out um, kind of put out their fire a little bit. My dad struggled for 12 years to find um, work in his field and that obviously impacted our family and so really research the job market before you come here um, so you know where to go to. Don't just go to the biggest, shiniest city. Go to where you're going to be, be able to find a job, but also find your community uh, where you'll have you know, people who will make introductions for you, help you build your network. Try to do that in advance before you come here um, so you don't same, face the same challenges that my parents did. Um, and when it comes to the blockchain community, I would say that's probably the one of the easiest communities to uh, to be introduced to because of the borderless nature of it, because everybody works with people abroad. And um, uh, I would say it's so multicultural already uh, in, in terms of how it's been built that I, I would say it's a great uh, it's a great space to be working in um, because then you have more flexibility in what you do in Canada and where. Try to to the best of your abilities to really understand uh, politics in Canada. Um, I find a lot of people who are here, even especially immigrants, they know a lot about the US or you know other places because it's like they're louder about it. But you live here and it's important for people to understand local, provincial, federal politics here because that helps you understand um, what your trajectory in this country is going to look like, what services you have available to you, how you can help advocate for your community, for your industry, and how you can help be a part of uh, shaping the future of Canada. Um, because working in blockchain means um, shaping the future digital economy. I've always been really passionate about politics and I've always been very passionate about technology. My parents think they'd be proud of the fact that uh, I stuck to my guns and I made it work and I uh, was able to make, uh, have a good network of people who support me in my, in my career. Um, so I'd say they're pretty proud of that. Uh, they're like, we don't know how to explain what you do back home to, to your grandparents or anything, but we're still proud of you because you made it work. <laughs>